This is a weird, like, I'm not comfortable in this skirt. But if I take it off, I don't want you guys to be able to see that I'm not wearing any pants. I mean, I'm wearing, like, boy shorts, so it's not, like, underwear, underwear. I just don't want you to see my crotch. Okay, hi. Wow, I've been gone for over a month. Does it feel like it's been a month? I don't think that it feels like it's been a month. Honestly, I have been filming. I've been recording a few things, so those videos will be up after this one, but I kind of wanted to film a sit down video, just kind of like updating you guys on what's been going on, why I haven't been posting. I've been wanting to film this video for a while. I didn't want to do a get ready with me because I'm kind of tired of those. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should just paint, do something chill and talk to you guys while I paint. Maybe you guys can paint with me or do whatever it is that makes you happy. I really have missed filming and talking to you guys. I think that, honestly, I haven't done a video where I just update you guys. Harley's literally just rolling around in a pile of paint brushes or let you in on what the fuck's going on in my life in a really long time. I feel like over time on YouTube, I started feeling kind of weird about filming and what, not, not weird about filming, but weird about like what I said and what I put out there because I think it just clicked in my brain that like so many people are watching me, so many people that I know watch my videos. I think it made me feel weird about like being vulnerable and being honest and sharing shit. At the same time, there are certain things that obviously you need to keep private off the internet and that's perfectly fine. But I think I got to the point where I censored myself so much that like I was starting to try to not show personality in my videos because I was like, if I just film a video about whatever it is the fuck that I'm doing, I don't really have to like say anything or like really put my personality out there. I don't know, I started feeling weird about being vulnerable, which is not good because this is my fucking channel and I should be able to be me and say whatever the fuck I want. And anyways, I'm fucking ranting. Let's catch up, shall we? I asked you guys to ask me some questions on Instagram. Before I get into the questions, I guess I should just update you guys on what I've been up to and what's been going on. After I filmed my last video, which was me redecorating my entire room, I actually filmed a video where I, I was glowing up for my birthday, I was doing all of these things, and then I even filmed a little bit of when I was in Vegas and I filmed to get ready with me. I even like filmed a little tour of the Airbnb, and all of those clips I ended up deleting. It just, it just wasn't it for me. Like, I, it wasn't a video that I was proud of, and it wasn't a video that I wanted to put up, so I was like, you know what, like, why would I just post it just to post it? I want to post things that I actually am excited to edit. I kind of had a little breakdown and then I entered a depressive episode. I was not in a good headspace, so I was like, okay, well, I don't want to film when I'm feeling like this because I just feel like shit and like I don't want to be on camera. I was like, I'm just gonna take time off. I was trying to make myself feel better. I was religiously going to the gym. I would take Harley on jogs. We found different parks that were absolutely beautiful that I'm so excited to go run at. was just really focusing on myself and my mental health and I was just taking care of things that needed to be taken care of and I was doing things that made me happy to just kind of like get myself out of that funk. Reading lots of new books, journaling, trying to get back into the routine and I just was like, it's okay, like it's okay. You know, you can take a little break, it's fine. I think another thing that really was or has been on my mind a lot and stressing me a lot is my health. I get really stressed out, like it literally consumes my entire mind when something is not okay with my health. Like if there's something wrong, it really gets to me and it's all I can think about. It's not something that I can like diagnose and fix myself. I still don't know what the f is going on with me, um, but we're working on it. Still haven't heard back from my doctor even though I went in last month. I've been having some sort of stomach issue. Honestly, ever since I can remember, even when I lived with my parents before I moved out, I would randomly get like these like stomach pains, but it was never anything to the point where I had to like go to the doctor for. It was just like pains that would just kind of like come and then go and I was like, okay, it's fine, whatever. Anyways, a couple years ago, I was having really, really bad stomach pain to the point where I had to go to the ER. I had a feeling that I knew what was going on and where it was coming from. During that time, I was drinking lots of Red Bulls. Oh, 
We love Red Bulls, don't we? And I would drink them on an empty stomach. I would take ibuprofen when I was on my period. I felt like it was the only pain medication that would actually help my cramps because my cramps get really, really bad the first and second day. I remember one time I went into the doctors. I don't remember what it was for, but the doctor literally told me like, yeah, just take ibuprofen like around the clock. It'll help with your cramps. I get my periods bright and early in the morning, bitch. My cramps will wake me up at like five in the morning. I obviously wouldn't wake up to make myself a full on breakfast and make sure I eat before I take ibuprofen. No, I would just take my ibuprofen and go back to bed. Then I would take ibuprofen around the clock for those two days. A lot of the time it would be on an empty stomach because when I have really bad cramps, I don't get hungry. When I went into the ER, I basically told the nurse, I was like, I'm pretty sure it has to do with me taking ibuprofen on an empty stomach and also I've been drinking lots of Red Bull and it's probably just fucking up my stomach. Like that's probably Probably what it is and she was like yeah ibuprofen does do that probably shouldn't be taking ibuprofen she was like just do Tylenol and I was like well Tylenol doesn't help but I got rid of ibuprofen there's no ibuprofen in my house that shit's not good for your stomach so if you've been taking lots of ibuprofen stop doing that they prescribed me with some sort of medication that was for stomach ulcers I believe I never got checked inside she was just like yeah that sounds like that would be something that would cause that we're gonna prescribe you with this took the medication that i was prescribed and my stomach was back to normal a year or so later i started getting stomach pain again and this time it was a little more intense this dull pain as if i had not eaten food in weeks when i didn't eat food my stomach hurt when i did eat food my stomach hurt this is usually what happens i ignore the pain and think that everything's fine if i just you know let my body fix it and then it gets to the point where it's like unbearable and then i'm like okay now now i can go they checked my chart and they were like oh we see that you came in so and so time ago and it was also related to some sort of stomach issue and i was like yeah don't know what that was they never really like diagnosed me but they did give me medication and so they gave me obviously some medication to take away the pain they prescribed me with stomach ulcer medication to take in the meantime but i was supposed to leave the er and call a doctor who actually deals with stomach issues and stuff they were like make sure you call blah 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 make an appointment so that they could actually see what's going on in your stomach i went home i was taking the medication that they gave me i put off calling the doctor for a whole month so a whole month goes by and then finally my stomach pain starts coming back again and I'm like, shit, I really do need to call this doctor. I'm trying to make an appointment. I'm thinking that they're gonna make me an appointment within you know, a week or two, everything's gonna be great. No, they don't have an appointment available until over a month later. So I'm like, I should have called a month ago, but you know, that's my own fault. I make an appointment with this doctor. So I go in and I'm telling the doctor what's going on, what are the symptoms I've been feeling. He's like, okay, well, it could be multiple different things. You know, you could have H. pylori, which is like a bacterial type of infection in your stomach. If it's not that and the results come back negative for that, we'll have to schedule an upper endoscopy for you so we can actually put a camera in your stomach and like see what it looks like up in there. And I was fucking terrified. <laughs> the way to test for H. pylori is you have to turn in a stool sample. He's like, turn in your stool sample first. Right as soon as you turn in your stool sample, start taking the medication for stomach ulcers. I go into the lab, I give my stool sample, start taking my medication. A week goes by and I get a call and it's from the lab, but I didn't answer because I, I didn't know who it was. I don't answer unknown numbers. So she leaves a voicemail and she's like, hi, um, this is blah, blah, blah calling from so-and-so lab. We see that you turned in a stool sample and it's actually been here for like a week now. We don't see any requests in your chart from any doctor requesting this stool sample. So we're just gonna have to throw it out and um, you can call your doctor and let them know that they need to put in the fucking request. What? Oh. <laughs> Okay. You're just gonna throw it out? Can't you just wait to speak to me, you know, till we figure this out? Can't you just hold it for a few more days? Is it taking up that much space? I call them back, they don't answer, and then I call another doctor and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. She's like, okay, well, I'll make sure they give you a call back. A few days go by, I get a call back and they're like, what's going on? And I'm like, well, I turned in a stool sample and I guess the doctor didn't 
do something and so they threw it out and I already started taking this medication so I don't know what to do what does the doctor want me to do and so they get in contact with the doctor and she's like okay I see what happened here you know he forgot to fucking sign something I don't know you're gonna have to stop taking the medication for another two weeks and then you're gonna come back in and give in another stool sample I'll we'll make sure it's all good on our end and everything's ready to go so stop taking the medication for two weeks this is around the time that I went to Mexico I come back then I turn in my stool sample so it's been like three weeks at this point a little bit later I get the results back and I am negative for H. pylori now we have to make the appointment for the upper endoscopy and an upper endoscopy is basically where they put you to sleep and they put a little camera on a tube thing down your throat all the way into your stomach and just kind of like look around and take photos and see if there's any ulcers or anything visible in your stomach. I had to be on a specific diet, made sure I ate no fried foods, no spicy foods, nothing acidic, very clean foods. Fast forward, I had my upper endoscopy appointment last month. I went in, I was really fucked scared because I've never been like put to sleep like that. Next thing I know I'm waking up and the doctor immediately shows me photos that they took of my stomach and my stomach looked fine. There was no ulcers. It basically looked like a pretty healthy stomach. They were like okay well we don't see anything but we took some samples and we're gonna see we're gonna look at it under a microscope maybe it's an infection or something that we can't see with the naked eyes in the meantime we are going to make you an appointment for a colonoscopy because if it's not in my stomach it has to be in my intestines and if you don't know what a colonoscopy is it's basically the exact same thing except through your other end. Not excited about it at all to like have four people in a room that you don't know just like looking at your butt. This is, that is so embarrassing to me. Like I'm, I'm, I cringe every time I think about a colonoscopy, but honestly, I'm just so ready to know what the fuck is going on so I can like figure it out. So that's scheduled. It's like in a couple weeks from now. So that's the update on that. That was a really long fucking story. I also think I'm gonna be doing some apartment hunting soon because my lease is almost up here and I don't think that I wanna stay here for another year. Like I just, I want a new environment. So that's gonna be fun. I finished sketching so we're gonna start the actual painting now and we'll get into the actual questions i love using big paint brushes it's like my favorite thing to do if i had like a huge canvas where i could just like roll around and paint paint with my body that sounds fucking fun a question that i got a lot that i have not addressed is about my only fans and why i deleted my only fans before i made the decision to delete it i was already thinking like i don't know if i really want to do this i want to focus and put my time into other things that are more fun for me the reason that i was really debating it was because it was good like extra income and i was like there's no other platform where all you have to do is post photos and make this amount of money. People on there just really feeling entitled to you and what you post and your body. And I was like, okay, first of all, you're not even paying that much. I should be charging way fucking more. <laughs> It just, it wasn't fun for me. Oh my god, I love this blue. And I was like, well, is it really f***ing worth it? Like, I really don't need this income. It's just, it was nice to have an extra income that was easy to make like that. It's not my job, and I'm so glad that it's not my job because it's just not something that I would be able to do long term. Props to all the girlies who do that because it's such... An annoying thing. How's life? I've really just been enjoying my time and doing things that are fun for me and bring me happiness. My pool just opened, so I've been going to the pool. I honestly live through Harley, I feel like. Like when she's happy and having a great time, like I'm fucking thriving. Nothing makes me happier than seeing her run around. Life's been life's been good, honestly. Have you decided to start dating again? Do you have a boyfriend? Are you single? I think I'm at a point right now where I'm like I'm open to dating, but at the same time i'm not like in a rush or anything the other day i was literally about to go on a date but then i don't know they gave me the ick so i was like mm, i'm just really trying to do fun things on my own my life is already complicated as it is i just i don't need a man i've been really trying to better myself in a lot of ways <laughs> i've realized that i'm not 
flexible. <laughs> there was a period of time where I was really focusing on my flexibility and I was so close to being able to do the splits and then I stopped and now like I barely even stretch. The only time I stretch is like at the gym before I do a workout I'll do like a quick stretch but I never stretch afterwards. I also used to be able to do a back bend. I can't do that shit anymore. I just realized how funny it would be if someone was like outside my door listening. I'm not talking to myself, I promise. I've also been trying to get back into playing the piano because that's honestly really fun for me. I love sitting and playing the piano and learning a new song and singing along to it so you might see little short videos of me doing that on Instagram or YouTube, I don't know. How not to get anxiety when going out doing things alone. I feel like the only way to not feel anxiety and just kind of like get over that feeling is to just do it. Like the more you do it, I promise you, the easier that it's gonna get and the less anxious you're gonna get going to places on your own. Starting off somewhere where it's not too crowded. I honestly have no clue like what I'm painting right now. Like none of this makes any sense, but we're just gonna go with it. I can spill some tea about my neighbor who recently let me know that they're into me. I filmed that whole thing like in a vlog. So you guys will see that. And I noticed that he lives with a girl who I'm assuming is his girlfriend. Like I've seen them outside, they have two dogs together. I've seen how they are with each other so I know that it's not just like a friend or like a sister or something. This guy is either really f***ing ballsy or that's not his girlfriend. But I don't know if they've been dating for a long time. I mean, obviously they fucking live together, so it's probably serious, right? I feel like I would want someone to tell me if my boyfriend's been hitting on them. And it's so bold too, because like I live right here. I could literally tell your girlfriend at any second. I'm like talking quietly because I feel like he lives right next door to me and I'm like scared that they're gonna like hear me. I don't know. <laughs> Just why do men? You know, why are men? All right, I'm almost done with this painting. Honestly, I can't tell if I like it or if I just hate it. That's all the questions I'm gonna answer today. So I'm just gonna finish this up really quickly. It is a female body. Yeah, she's really hot actually. Okay, that was fun. Don't forget to follow my social media so you guys can stay updated on everything that I'm doing. Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok will be down below in the description box. I love you guys and I'll see you very soon.